Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I am doing my version of the Taylor Unisex bag by Huff and Cups. Um, so if you can see this, obviously you can. The first thing you'll notice is that my flap is a lot longer than the original pattern. Um, I have extended it by four inches and then just moved this down. I've also got my slip pocket in the front and my zipper pocket in the back. And I've done a zipper pocket on the inside. So if you would like to see how I have done this bag, please stay tuned. Alright guys, I am going to start with... I don't really know actually. Probably the back panel. I've got to start somewhere, right? Um, so I have cut out all the pieces that the pattern says. I'm going to try and do it as close to normal as possible. Uh, but can't promise such things. So, obviously I've just forgotten to round this off. So with my pattern cutting, what I actually did was I cut out the darts on the pattern uh, so that I could trace them in. So it's actually, you can see it just faintly in the lining. I've actually drawn the pieces on. Um, so that's going to make it easier for me to do this. So I'm just going to shuffle all of that over there. I've also replaced the lights in my sewing machine because they were the batteries were getting a bit low. So I'm just going to start with a two and a half mil stitch length. I'm going to stitch and I'm going to run off the edge, then bring this round, turn it up to three and three quarters, and I can actually top stitch both of these. So I'm going to fold it completely over and then sew one eighth of an inch from the edge of that. So I'm just finger pressing this. Now this is a suede, um, so I personally will not be putting the iron directly on it. That's just my own little paranoia issue there. All right, so now we should have that. So now I'm gonna come in and sew all these darts. Oops. I could have sewn them at the start, but then it would have made it more 3D and it would just sit flat. So I find it easier to do it this way. So all I've got to do is line up the two lines on each side and show you, but I don't think you'd be able to see because it's so faint. And then I'm just going to stitch. Now I am still going to back stitch at the start and the end. I know it's not a very long line, but you don't want it to come out. So then I'm just going to chain stitch. So I'm going to come and grab this next one and do the same thing there. Like that, and then I can cut the first one off and then grab the other side. Um, okay, so I actually can't see those through that. So I'm just going to grab the pattern piece. Give me one sec. Alright, so I've got all my pattern pieces. I've just got them on my little card loop. So I can just grab that piece and then sit it on and I can just trace the darts directly onto it. So you don't cut out the... You don't cut it out when you're cutting the fabric, but I did cut it out on the pattern because it makes it way easier to transfer the darts on. They'll go up as high as they need. Everything will be in glorious unison. All right. I've also been getting a lot of comments lately about how I need to buy a non-rotary motor. And I promise I will when I have a spare, you know, hundred and whatever dollars to go and buy one. But at this particular time, it is not really a thing. So unfortunately to watch my videos, you've just got to deal with the whirring of the motor. I will turn it off as often as I can for you so you don't have to hear it, but it is just going to be a thing. Okay, so now we've got all four darts, so it's sitting up like that. We can pop that aside, or if you wanted to, you could pin it on. I'm not going to do that, obviously. So then I'm going to come and I'm going to grab a lining piece because it's on top, so it makes it easy, and my pocket piece. So all my lining pieces have been interfaced with an iron-on non-woven interfacing in medium. And all my outside pieces are done with Form Fuse 1600, uh, which I think I've now found my supplier, so I can start putting it on the website. 
so it should be cheaper than Spotlight for people in Australia. All right, so my this is my just standard pocket that I do for all my bags. So it is uh, 12 by 8, I think. So I've measured half an inch down from the top, and then this box is 3 eighths of an inch wide. So then I'm going to grab my lining piece. And then I'm going to put the, the fold, the excess, up the top so that it can fold over. And I'm doing it about two inches from the top. I am eyeballing it, so it, you can kind of put it wherever you want. I don't want it too close to the top because we've still got a seam allowance and a top stitch. And I don't want it to sit right at the top of that flap. So that's why I've done about two inches. Um, but you can stick it wherever you like. You can put it further down if you wanted it to sit more at the bottom. Uh, you could also do one of these on each side of the bag and have two zippered pockets. So one of them you would seal the bottom hole and then the other one you're gonna leave open like this because this is where we're gonna turn the bag through. So you could even make this pocket bigger if you wanted to as well. So you can make it come out probably another another inch on each side so it's nearly the full width of the bag I mean you could do anything so I'm just gonna pinch it in half and then grab some scissors and make a snip so that I can get them in there and then I'm gonna cut down the center of that zipper pocket till I get about half an inch from the end and then I'm just gonna do what I call triangling out the corners so I've cut it so that in the corner there is a triangle. Now you want to try and get as close as you can to those stitches without snipping them. If you snip them you just have to go back and stitch back a stitch length and seal it back up. So now I've got this funky little box. Hobby turned my iron off. So then I'm just going to take both the pieces of the pocket and just push it through the hole. And then I'm going to take my thumbs, and I'm going to twist that out, and I'm going to finger press those edges. And then I'm just going to roll this between my fingers to get right to that, and then just score it with my fingers, or fingernails if you've got them. Mine keep breaking, so I don't have them. And then just for a little bit of added bonus, I am just going to quickly chuck the iron on top of that. Like so, just to press it down really well. Uh, so I'm using Zipper Tape by The Yard. So this one is an 8 inch zip. Obviously, because it's an 8 inch pocket. Um, so to put it in, you just crack it a little bit. And then this is my zipper jib my husband made. So it's just a clamp with a fork that has been bolted to it. So you just feed both sides in equally. And then your zipper head is on. Uh, if you'd like to see that closer up, I have done lots of videos where I move it over. Um, but I try not to make my videos go too long, so I'm sure you've watched another one that's got it. So I'm going to start on my short edge, because I just always do, and I'm about an eighth of an inch from the fold. So we're going to leave your needle down to pivot. And then I'm just going to keep zipping this up to keep it as straight as possible. And then when I get close to it here, I'm going to make sure my needle's down and unzip it. And then so just past that end so that when I turn, I'm still an eighth of an inch from the fold. And again, pivot. It's just a lot of pivot and turning, really. So now I'm about halfway. I'm going to zip it back up so that it's not in my way. Go all the way to the edge and then back stitch. Now I deliberately didn't change my thread to white. I wanted to have the blue accent so that it ties it in with the outside more. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, it's just what I did. So now I'm gonna make sure that it's open so that I don't have to think about that later. And I'm just gonna fold the sides and stitch down both sides. So we don't want to do the bottom. The bottom we need to leave open because that's where we'll turn the back through. So make sure that you back stitch as you're doing these because you want to lock these stitches in. And then I'll come and do the other side. 
Now, an easy way to do it is the bottom should line up because when we drew our beautiful rectangle for the zipper hole, we made sure that it was even to begin with. So, to sew that on so it's not slanted or crooked, you just make the bottom even. That's my big secret. Okay, so that piece is now done. Well, almost. We're still going to do the darts. So if we grab... Where's my other outside piece? So now I've got my two lining pieces. This is a flat piece, so don't worry about that for now. I should have this more organised before I start. Sorry about that. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing my... Sorry, I'm now just organising it so it's a little bit easier to grab at. My gusset piece. So I did, because this is a non-directional fabric, the pattern just allows you to fold it. If you are using directional fabric, you just add whatever seam allowance you want to use um, and to the actual pattern and then stitch it along this line. So you can mark this line and then just add some extra so that when you stick it in the bag, both sides are pointing up. Um, so this is a custom order and they wanted the music notes because it makes sense with the outside when I show you that. Well, you've probably already seen it, it's at the start of the video. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is mark our darts. Now, I was smart and I have marked them on the fabric so you can see it through the interfacing. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew all of those darts. I do love darts. It reminds me of making clothes. So then we're going to do the other one. So I'm just going to chain sew these. Because uh, you waste less thread and it's a little bit quicker. So you just stick it in. I am still back stitching on all of it, even though it is a very small seam. I just don't want it to come undone. So fold that one. And the back stitch. And then the other side, which is here. Fold it. There, that one's been a bit tricky because the black was in the way on the fabric, so it was a little bit harder to see. That's okay. So then you just unclip all of those, cut your uh, threads off at the end. And so now they should curl up a little bit, which is totally 100% what we want. So now I'm going to fold that in half. I'm going to join my things there to find the center. And I'm just going to clip it. Now, I don't clip with my snips anymore because I got my finger and I was clipping the other day. I was clipping threads off and then I got a different finger. I don't know where. But it's just not ideal. So I don't, I don't use those very often. Because I keep cutting myself because I don't pay enough attention. Alright, so there's the centre of both of those. We also need the centre of this on both sides. push all of those into my bin. I've got it perfectly angled so I can just push it off the end of this table. Okay, so we're going to start with our centre snips. I also uh, refilled my skull with more clips and I did not realise how dead my other ones have become. These ones are much stiffer to open. I'm very much enjoying them. The older ones are just down the bottom more so eventually they'll all mix together. Alright, so I'm going to do three clips there, and then I'm going to come round, and I'm going to clip the top down. Uh, because we want to make sure that this seam fits, so any excess fabric it looks like we have will just move basically into the corners. So then that is what we've got left to work with. So you need to make sure that you hold it as a 3D object. And you'll find that it's going to fit a lot better than if you're trying to do it flat. So if I'm trying to do it this way, see how it's all puckering? But if I hold it and push that out, because that's the way the bag will sit, you'll find it'll fit a lot easier. So that's fitting wonderfully. Um, I've also pushed the dart uh, towards the side, not the centre. So I will be doing the same to the other side in a minute. I'm going to snip that off because it's annoying me. Always snip your tails as you go. 
All right, so come back out the top. I'm also making sure that all my clips are facing the gusset piece because this is what will be on top when I'm sewing. And they're easier to pull off when they're that way. So now we're getting to the corner. I'm just holding it to make sure that there's no ripples. By pushing my thumb in it like that, I'm creating the 3D shape it's going to eventually be as opposed to two flat pieces of fabric. And then you just stick in as many clips as you feel is necessary. That's probably more than necessary, but whatever. I'm into clipping today. So now, when we hold it like this, because these are the seam allowance, you should not have any crinkles on the inside of the bag. So we'll get nice and close so you can see that. So now we're just going to stitch with the two and a half stitch length. I'm going to make sure we back stitch at the start and then turn around. Always clean up your clips as you go. Alright, so see how they just stopped? That's because um, I forgot to chop off the excess uh, zipper tape and it just distorted my sewing. Always use your um, zipper scissors. You should have separate scissors for zippers and papers and plastics. So these are the ones that I use for zips and cutting out all of my laminated templates because they are a little bit blunt now. And I don't want to blunt my good ones. Okay, so then we just check to make sure that that's all gone in beautifully, which it has. So now we're going to do the same to the other side. So we're going to match up that middle seam, making sure the clips face the gusset again. If you try and sew it the other way, it can be done, but you're going to have a few issues. You might, you might accidentally pinch your fabric and have little bits which obviously we don't want so it's just always easier to sew gusset side up for me personally anyway you might be the opposite although i doubt it the fabric sits better gusset side up so now we're just going to clip down the side matching the edges and then so we're at the corner so i'm going to put my thumbs in and then just roll that up so it's all sitting nicely. So with my thumbs in it like that, that is actually the curve that it's going to be. So it's all sitting beautifully, so now I can just clip it where it is. And those clips are the wrong way. You may not think it matters, but it's easier for me to pull them off and sew in one big swoop than it is to have to stop to pull the clips off. So I'm going to go to the other side, match up that top. I do love this base pattern. There are so many cool things that you can do with it. All right, so then again, I'm gonna stick my fingers in like this to make that curve. And then it sits perfectly and you can just clip it. Three clips and she's done. All right, so let's sew the other side. So again, same seam allowance as the other side. We're just gonna pull the clips off as we go. And I'm just constantly smushing this down out of the way. And I can hear that I have just run out of bobbin thread. <sighs> so annoying. So I'm going to chuck some clips back on. I'm forever running out of bobbin thread on videos. I'm so sorry. This was full, but I suppose I did make something else this morning before I did this video. Which was going to be a video, um, but I forgot to empty out my phone. So it just stopped recording and I didn't notice because I don't look at the camera very often. Which is also probably why you see me looking at the camera a lot more today. Because 
I already had that issue once. So I was gonna have two videos for you, but yeah, the other one didn't finish recording, so. Such as life, I'm afraid. I will just do the video another day. Now I'm sure you've heard me say this in other videos, but I don't fully fill my bobbins. I, I do them about three quarters full and then I stop because if they're too full, I find that they have issues when I start sewing, which is not ideal. One more bobbin should be enough. I also don't re-thread my machine. I just leave a bit, tie my old one to the new one and pull it through. So that's all the tricky bits of my machine already threaded for me. I do waste a little bit of thread, but I save myself a whole bunch of time. So I'm a big, big believer of doing it that way. I don't do it with my other machines. It's only this one. Oh no, that's a lie. I also do it to my overlocker because, you know, overlockers are annoying to thread, especially industrial ones. So all I do is I um, lift up and take away all the tension and then pull them through one at a time. All right, so I'm just going to start back a little bit from where I was uh, to lock in those stitches that obviously didn't get locked in before. Now, even if they come out, I've stitched over them so they can't. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to chop off those tails and this tail. So now we have the inside of our bag and just make sure that you can stick your hand through your pocket. So we can pop that aside now. Now we're gonna do our, our flap. So as you saw at the start of the video, it's got uh, some custom embroidery on it. Um, and I'm going to add this accent panel across the bottom. So I did make sure when I was doing the embroidery that it would sit up high enough that I could still do this because I really like the way this looks. Yes, the Mighty Messenger bag has a similar look, but then they've got the zip in the thing. And they're a different size bag. But I just really like this bottom accent. I also think it's going to help protect the flap a lot more um, by having this here. So I've just used a three and three quarter stitch length to stitch that along the top there. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also have tucked that in. Uh, but you'd probably want to make it a bit longer. So mine is, I probably should have measured that for you actually. So mine is one and three quarter inches uh, deep. And then just everything else is the same. Um, and for the flap, I have just extended this four inches or 10 centimeters. So the other flap was only, let's say that big in total. So I've just added the four inches. Um, and then on my pattern pieces, I made sure that it was going to work that I move down the magnet. So the magnet um, is here. So I'm just going to move the magnet down four inches as well. Um, and obviously I need to attach that to the pocket and not the main body of the bag. But we're getting to that. Alright, so I'm going to take my lining panel and clip it down because I don't want it to move on me. Actually, I could just put it face down. Back to a two and a half stitch length. Uh, you should probably clip this, stitch this, clip it, yeah, with clips. And I stretched my vinyl a little bit when I was sewing this, so I'm just following the lines of the actual bag and not the vinyl and then I'm just going to trim off that excess along the bottom curves here. So I'm going to trim all the way along. So we've got now a minimal seam allowance that's going to help when we turn it. So I'm just going to scrunch it up like this like you do a sock and then I'm going to put my thumb on the corner or the bend, it's not really a corner and push it out. And that, for me, is the quickest way I turn out corners. And then, if it was a bit tighter, I'd grab my little um, pokey flute stick, 
So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, it's not sitting very nicely at the corners. So I'm going to go and press it, but because this is suede, I'm going to press it lining side up. So just give me one moment. Um, I'm not running the iron along it, I'm just pushing it down on the edges. We also obviously don't want to put it on the top because of the vinyl piece. That's probably the other main reason. So now I'm going to go up to a three and three quarter stitch length again, and I'm going to top stitch around the edge at one eighth of an inch, which for me is the middle of my foot. That's why you'll find a lot of my stitching is that length because it's just the middle of the foot and it's easy to guide around. I do love this size messenger. I have made it before, um, a while ago. It's quick, it's easy. I actually like the darts. I think it gives it a little something. You don't see many people's patterns with, um, like bag patterns with darts in them, but I do quite enjoy them. All right, now we're gonna back stitch at the end of there as well. So that's the flap done, except for the magnet. So we'll do the magnet in a minute. All right, next up we're gonna do the gusset. So even though this is vinyl, to give the bag extra stability, I have interface form for you 1600. So I don't interface all vinyl ever, but in this bag, I do want it to sit up really, really nicely. So I have done it. So, I actually don't need to do anything much to the gusset except add the strap connectors. So I'm doing them, I don't actually even read how they're done in the pattern, I felt like doing them this way, so this is the way I'm doing them. Um, so I've got, I'm using one inch strap connectors and I'm making a one inch strap. So I'm using two inch, um, this is two inches wide and it's four inches long because I wanted to stitch it on the top and have it stick out and be decorative. Um, the other option you could do is where you cut into it and then sit them inside. I have done that in a lot of the other tutorials. So you could do it that way if you wanted to. So I'm just folding both sides into the center. Um, my double sided tape is from the reject shop. Of all the rolls I've bought from them, this is the first really dodgy one, it's got, I don't know what's wrong with it. You can't get a piece longer than that before it like messes up. So I won't be using that for straps. I'll use one of the many others I've got sitting there. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch one eighth of an inch each side of that line because I want the decorative look on it. You don't have to do this. This is definitely more decorative than anything. I just really like the way it looks. So I do it a lot. It was originally done for me, I found it first in the B Baronia Bowler Bag by Blue Color, and I really, really love that pattern. Okay. My two wheels. So now what I'm going to do, I always put the connecting part inside so we never see it. And I'm actually going to make a strap connector that sits on the outside like this. So what I want to do is I want to put double-sided tape in like the middle half. Because that's going to hold the bits down. Uh, you could also put it on the outside two halves, like a quarter each end. I just find this quicker. Um, you could do it the whole way if you really wanted to. Um, I obviously don't want to. So then we're just going to fold those two sides down to meet approximately in the middle. So, and that sits nicely. It's now, the raw edges are in the middle so that I can just stitch that on and there's no edges anywhere. So I'm gonna do the same to this side as well. We're gonna do them both at the same time and then place them. 
So it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle. It can be more to one end if you want, or like you don't have to measure it perfectly. You just don't want these ends at the bottom. That's pretty much the main goal here. So now I'm going to attach these one and a half inches down from the top because I've still got seam allowances and things that need to come off here. So I'm going to go one and a half inches down and I'm just going to mark the middle inch. And then I'm going to do the same to the other end. One and a half inches down and mark the middle inch. Um, so I'm just lining up the edges with the numbers on here to make it easier. You could also mark down and then across and do like a cross or whatever makes you happy. Alright, so now while I'm still on my three and three quarter stitch length, I'm going to line that line up that I've done with the top of the vinyl. So not the top of here, but the actual vinyl. I'm going to line it up. And you can start at the top or the bottom. I'm going to start at the top for no particular reason except I'm already there. So I'm going to manually crank three stitches and then go back into the first hole and stitch slowly across the top. Then I'm going to pivot and go down. Now you don't want to run off the bottom of this. And we also, every time we're pivoting, we're making sure that our needle is in the down position so that it won't move on us. And then back through that first hole, and then you can back stitch, or you could lift it up and do three more stitches forward to lock them in. But that is now our strap connector sitting beautifully on the outside. So now we're going to do the same to the other side. Other end, side end, I don't know, both. Just going to squish that and then line her up in the center. I'm going to start at the top. One, two, three, back through the first hole. Now I'm pushing down quite firmly on that because I don't want it to move while I'm trying to stitch that. Because if that moves, it will stop it being straight. And that's obviously what we don't want. And down. Now we're just going to fold that in half and find the centre and then we can sit that aside as well. It's another piece done. So we are now nearly done. Very nearly done. So I'm going to grab my back piece. So the back pocket is actually going to sit on here. Um, and I didn't mark my Dot. So I'm just going to grab all of this. I don't even have to connect it from the loop because I always put my loops in the top corner. So I'm just going to line this up and draw my darts on. Again, don't cut out the darts on your fabric. Just on the patterns to make your life a little bit easier. Okay. And a miss, but that's okay. So there and there. So you match up the bottom ends and then just pinch it and it'll line itself back up. So I'm going to go back to a two and a half stitch length because that's a nice joining length. We're going to make sure that we back stitch or lock stitch, people call it different things, at both ends. You guys didn't see that, but I nearly just clipped my finger again. I'm the worst at that. All right, so then we just want to line up all of this to all of there, like so. I'm going to clip it and then I'm going to baste it in like a 1 8 seam allowance or something to that effect. You also, if you wanted to, probably could have done all of these at the same time. I'm not sure what the pattern says, can't remember. I didn't pull it up before this video because I wasn't that smart, apparently. So there you go. 
We're just winging it. So you want to make sure all three layers are there. And then I'm just going to face around the edge. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Before I do that, I'm going to insert my magnet. So, first thing I need to do is on the pattern with a permanent tech stamp, I need to mark a four more inches down from where the current magnet will sit, which should be pretty close to the bottom. So it's, the way I've done it, it's not sitting that far off the bottom, it's just like slightly above where the, the darts are. Because the darts is going to make the new bottom, and you don't want it to go too far past that. So I'm going to take my hole punch, and I've already got it set to a nice large hole, and I'm just going to punch that hole out. Now because it's still a little bit too far up, I have to roll this in so that I can get to it. I'm going to squish it, move it around. There we go, that's better. So now that it's all one piece, we can line it up like so. And that is where I want my magnet. Marking it with an erasable texture, although it probably doesn't matter unless I did it really crooked. All right, let me just grab a magnet. Sorry about that, it's been a very rushed morning. All right, so I've now got my magnet. I'm gonna stick the center hole over the center section there. And I'm gonna draw the two lines on. I'm then gonna take my uh, stabbing tool and I'm gonna just lift it up. So I've stuck my hand in there. So I'm just lifting it up so that I'm not gonna cut the lining because that's very important. We don't wanna cut the lining. And then I'm gonna grab some fray stopper glue and just do two small dots over them so that it won't fray. That's obviously what we don't want. Now I have to squeeze it to get it into the nozzle, but once it's in the nozzle, stop squeezing and don't let it fall down like that. It spills everywhere. That one's empty enough that that wouldn't have mattered. Um, but when they're new and full, they just spill. They ooze out quite easily. So now I'm sticking the female or the bigger, the bigger half into here and then bending the bits outwards like so. So now I'm going to baste all of that down so that that piece is done. Turn my light on. Oh, it's so much brighter with new batteries. I love it. Make sure that I backstitch just so it doesn't come undone. With all of the um, darts in this corner, I've actually folded them so that they go in opposite directions so that it's less bulky because we don't like bulk. And I'm just stitching, yeah, about one eighth of an inch around. Now, if you were leaving off this pocket, which in turn is going to be my front pocket, not my back pocket, because I didn't want it where the zip was. That's a deliberate thing. So this is my front pocket, not my back pocket. Um, if you weren't going to do the pocket, you could just put the magnet directly under this piece. Um, but I don't want it on my other side because my other side is going to have like a zip straight across and that will just annoy me. So anyway, we're going to do this in the same way that I do Heidi. So I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch down and rule a line. And then I'm going to do the same with the top piece, which is a rectangle. So you can pick either side. Three quarters of an inch down. I think it's three. Is it three quarters or half? I lied. It's half an inch down. Half an inch. Three quarters is Heidi. This one's half. That's my bad. 
half an inch down like that. And then I'm going to stick on some double sided tape. I don't feel like dealing with the other one, so I'm grabbing this one instead. And we're just sticking it on the top, preferably within the seam allowance of the half inch that we drew. Ignore the other line. And then I'm going to peel the double sided tape off like that and just bend it down onto itself. Now if it doesn't want to stay you can just hit it with an iron to make it stay which is what I'll be doing. See now it'll stay. I'm going to do the same to this. Right, so that, I haven't ironed the interfacing on firmly enough and it's come off, but that's why we're going to iron it. So I'm just going to fold it back over and stick the iron on it to iron the crease in. Uh, I'm just leaving it sit there for like eight seconds or so, just so it gets a really good crease, I guess. Okay, so now we've got two pockets. And that's it. So I'm going to do it in the same fashion that I do, Heidi. So I'm going to have this piece with the bulk to my left and then stick the zip along that top edge, which is obviously the straight one. And then I'm going to start with my bottom and I'm going to line that up over the zipper and then top stitch it with a three and three quarter stitch length, which is going to both join it and stitch it. So I'm just trying to make sure that this piece is sitting right in the middle of the zipper teeth and then you're using the edge of the zipper as a guide for your foot to stitch along. Like that and then back stitch. And then you can just go ahead and either finger press or iron that one down. It's a little bit bigger, don't worry about it. It's the way I'm doing it. It happens every time. So this one we want to have facing down in the same direction, like so. And then I'm going to grab this one and do the same thing again. So I'm now I'm matching up so that they're just touching right in the center. So you want to make sure they're lined up at the edge. And we're going to back stitch. And then we're just going to hold it and stitch down. And then back stitch at the end. So now it sits flat, but there's a zipper in there when we open it, and there's enough room with this edge that we can get the zipper up and down. So again, I'm just going to install the zipper. Now I like my zippers to go from left to right. Um, this will be on the back of the bag, which will make it still correct. So I'm going to do it the same way I always normally would. So I'm just going to split it a little bit and then feed both the sides through like so. And then put the zip on. So now what we can actually do is in the same fashion as Heidi again, we're going to just top stitch right around the edge and then I'm going to do all of that dart as one big one because obviously as you can see I've got a little bit of excess because of the way I'm doing it. Pocket. And this will just smooth everything else nicely. So I'm just stitching with like a 1-8 seam allowance just to join them all together so they are now one piece. It's also sealing off the zip so the zip can't fall off the end. So, grab my scissors, trim off the excess, and the reason my corners don't look perfectly rounded is because, again, I hand drew them because I had the dots marked. Oh look, I still do. They're probably wrong now because I've just trimmed all that off. So you can actually just grab any piece because all the dots are the same. Mark it on. Oh, you know what? They're actually good. I'm just going to remark them so we can see them a bit better, but they are actually pretty much in the same spot. So that particular piece 
didn't have a lot cut off it. Okay, so now we're going to do the dots. So from here to there, squish it down. And I'm going to chop off this excess because it's quite thick and bulky and I don't want it in my bag. I'm sure the pattern says don't chop them off, but these ones I'm going to because this um, suede is quite thick with all the interfacing and everything. Backstitch, go up, backstitch. Lots of backstitching. Oh, no, this should be all right. So there we go. I'm just keeping my zip in the middle, by the way, because I don't want it too close to the edges because the closer that it is to the edge, the more likely you are to accidentally hit it with your needle um, if it moves at all. So we don't want that. My bobbin just had a bit of a meltdown. So I backstitched too fast and it's come like way unraveled. So to fix that, I actually have to pull it off until it's back to normal. And then I'll just manually wind it back on because I don't like to waste thread unnecessarily. And it's usually not heaps, so that's all fixed. But that was just because I backstitched too fast for the machine. It's not a fan of fast backstitching, which I understand. That's fine, whatever. Okay, so now again, we're going to fold this in half. Match up the top, the sides, the dots, and then come across here and snip the center. And then the same thing with this one. In half, match the top, sides. And the reason I'm going all the way down is because it's a curve on the corner. And I don't want to be wrong. So that's now got snips. This has now got snips. So now we're going to do the same thing we did for the lining. I'm also going to turn the iron off because it's ticking in the background. So I'm going to match up the center seams and make the clips face the gusset piece. You know what? Create a bit of chaos. So then again, we're going to come up to the side and clip. And just move down. And then when we get closer to that edge, did you see I just pushed that under? So I, I usually actually push it away from me because I find it easier to do the thumb thing from this side. So again, we're just going to maneuver it so that it's sitting like the curve that it will be. And then just chuck some clips in. Now the thickest part of this bag is going to be where the darts are because there's so much interfacing on this bag. Now the bag also, I think the pattern says you can use fleece. You could also use foam. Um, but because I'm already using a pretty stiff fabric and then I've got the Form Fuse 1600, I haven't put it on. One more clip. And then went to that corner. So again, I'm just going to maneuver it and then whack some more clips in. And that one just needs to scooch over a little bit. Oh, I've used a lot of yellow in a row. Hmm. Oh well, whatever. So that is now clipped on. So it's going to look weird. It's meant to go freak out. So again, seam allowance, back stitch at the top. And just pull them off as you're going down. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but that is quite thick and my machine is struggling. So I've decided to sew slower so that I don't snap a needle. On a domestic machine, the general rule of thumb is nine hours of sewing per needle. You should never wait until it just snaps. I know most of us do, um, but the end is actually quite blunt by the end of nine hours and you're straining your machine by having to push down extra hard. So it's just better for your machine 
uh, if you change out your needles. Like, so if you've sewn all weekend, maybe, you know, on Sunday before you pack it up, chuck a new needle in for next weekend. They're not that expensive and machines are more expensive to replace. Okay, so that's all beautiful. I know it looks a bit funny there, but that's because of the darts. If I actually push the darts inwards and have them inverted, it sits beautiful again, which you can't really see. So now we're going to do the other side. It's the same deal. Match up the center. Mm, clips towards the gusset. And I've already started pushing it in with my thumb. Um, not necessarily deliberately, it's just a weird habit that I now am in. Weird but good. My bag corners are always so much easier because I push them like that. Alright, I like to clip in my lap, uh, which is why I've got the camera on this angle. I quite often do the angle where you're in front of me, except you can't really see what I'm doing as well, and I do do a lot of clipping in my lap just because it's closer to me and it's comfortable, I guess. Alright, last side. If anybody's yelling at the screen, I haven't forgotten about the other magnet half in the flap. We're just not there yet. You could actually, if you wanted to, install all the magnets at the very start. You also don't have to build this bag in the same way I do. You can do it however you like. This is just how I do it. And basically, I'm not really doing it in an order. I'm just, as I'm seeing the pieces, I am joining them. So if I had have seen the zipper, these pieces first, I would have started with the outside. So again, I'm pushing the gusset down and I'm pushing the other piece, I'm folding it over out of the way so that I can stitch this neatly and in piece. Now again, I'm coming up to a bulky section, so I'm gonna stitch slowly. Oh, I missed my bin. Ah, right, and back stitch. Trim off your tail at the other end. And now, oh, looks like a cool bag. Find the center. Uh, that pen. And I'm just going to stick it about one inch up from the bottom. So I'm going to draw my little line. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. So I've drawn my lines. Now I'm going to stick my hand inside the flap. And cut the holes. Put the lid back on my knife so I don't stab myself in the hand, of which I have done, and it sucks. A drop of fray stopper. So again, wait till it's in the nozzle and then just touch it on. It is very, very runny stuff. Which I did not realise the first time I ever opened the um, thing and just squirted it all over everything. Not the funnest thing I've ever done. All right, so I'm just pushing that magnet prongs out like so. So this is the front because I can see the magnet. So I'm going to put this in and join right sides together at the back. So I'm just going to center that flap. And yes, it's meant to be smaller. So I'm just centering that flap along that back wall, like so. I've over pulled the lining somewhere, so I'm just going back. I had a big ripple in the lining, so I've obviously pulled it more. Then we're going to turn this one in the right way. 
And now is where you get to decide if you want your zipper pocket on the front or the back wall of your bag. Um, doesn't necessarily really matter. It's personally entirely up to you. I tend to always put it on the back wall. Uh, but if you've done two, it ultimately wouldn't matter. You could put it wherever you like. So I always join the smaller side pieces first. I don't know why. It's just the habit I'm in. So I'm going to clip it in the center. I'm not going to clip it on that seam allowance because I'm going to show you in a minute why I'm not doing that. Um, and I'm sorry if you can hear a bunch of rumbling. I think they're playing with the tanks again. It's either tanks or really big guns. I'm not sure which. All right. Now, for domestic machines, this is going to get bulky. So what we're going to do is we're just going to trim on an angle up near the top like so. So that we've got considerably less bulk there because we still need to top stitch this. And I don't want it to be crazy bulky. Because I want the stitches to sit nicely. Um, this is another reason also why I don't ever put my, um, what are they called? The square rings that I attach to the side here. I never put them here if I can help it. Because it creates even more bulk to try and top stitch over. And I find that's when I have the most problems. So by attaching them to the side like this or when I do the, the cut into the vinyl... It's just taking that much vinyl out of the top stitching later. So for domestic machines, that is a great alternative. And for those that have domestic machines that don't want to spend a fortune on feet, go and buy yourself a roll of Teflon tape and just Teflon the bottom of all your feet. I did a video. It's like a three minute video. It's awesome. Teflon tape is the bomb. So I'm just, I don't know why I'm putting so many clips. I really didn't need to do that many. Um, but it is now clipped all the way around. So I am going to stitch with the lining at the top. So I'm going to put it in this way. Lift up my foot so I can get it under. And I'm just going to take away one of my clips. So this one. So not all the way in the corner. I don't want to have the start and stop in the corner. That's going to be more difficult. So I'm just going to start along the straight about probably an inch and a half from the corner so that if I have any issues going around it it's going to allow me to straighten back up so that my st stitches actually match so I'm just taking them slow and steady I never do this too fast and I'm constantly spinning this bag because it is a 3d object so we want to keep moving it around to make it easier to get under the needle See, tails. This is, oh, that's the tail we just started with. But this is why you always trim off your tails as you go, so they're not in the way. So again, I'm not rushing this. You can tell that I'm sewing considerably slower than others because I'm trying to move around it and I want to get my stitches as straight and even as possible. You always want to stop with the needle in the down position. So now I'm just going to cut little V's into the corner joins. So I'm just basically scooping out all of that excess stitching. Again, this is a top stitching related thing because I don't want to have more bulk than is necessary. So this is a great solution for people that have domestics that think they can't do the layers. If you trim that out, that's now not that thick where we're going to need to actually stitch. Okay, so to turn out messenger bags, I always grab the flap first and pull it through. Every time. Um, if it's not in the way, problem solved. Then I'm going to grab a corner. So I'm probably going to grab that one. I'm going to push it in and grab it so it's like a puppet. And the reason I do this is because it's something I've actually, like, I'm not going to lose grip on it. And then I'm just going to work it so it's inside itself. And then slowly pull it through the hole. And then I'm going to bend this down and basically stuff the whole bag through the pocket like that. And once you've got it over like that, you know you're home free. So then I'm just going to grab that 
and grab this and pull it apart and it just pops straight through. So I'm just going to push at my little seams along here. So I'm using my finger to push along that seam line because I don't want it to kind of buckle on itself. I want it to be nice and crisp. And then to get it extra, extra crispy, you, you roll it in your fingers like that and then you pull it back and forth and that creates a nice crease which will then stop it rolling. See? So like the bottom here. We're going to grab it and just, I don't know what that's called, move it back and forth. It's just helping create that seam so it's going to sit nice. This isn't going to wreck your seams either, so don't be... If this is going to wreck your seam and you're going to break, like, pop a seam by doing this, you should go and do a second line of stitching to help reinforce it because this should be strong enough to handle that. All right. Then we're going to do the other side. I'm doing this now because this is also making sure that I haven't missed anywhere along this stitching. Not that I think that I have, but you just want to make sure. Somebody in a group the other day was asking about how you stop the rolling. This is how, if you're watching this video. Then I'm just going to work from the top down. It's just adding a nice crease in all the layers of the vinyl and the interfacing, like so. Then I'm just going to push this all the way out, make sure that I haven't missed anywhere. Push on the seams nicely. I'm pretty happy. What is that? Dust. That's fine. I will wipe it over with a damp cloth. Alright, so now I'm just going to seal up this here pocket. So I'm just going to use my fingers as a guide and just bend that under. So I bend it. I make sure all those weirdo edges are in. And then pinch it. And then I'm just going to stitch as close to that bottom edge as I can without running off the edge. Because we obviously do want to seal it in one big foul swoop like so. Zip it up. Push the lining in the bag. Now if your uh, lining is really saggy, what you can do is before you stitch up that uh, pocket, you can just go in and just take off like another eighth of an inch around the seams and that will therefore make it smaller, which will then make it sit flatter if you've got like a super saggy lining. Mine's pretty good. Needs an iron obviously, but it's good. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch this so that we're at the joining seam at the top and I'm going to go around and clip it. Uh, you could also do this, but I still think you'll need to clip it. So therefore I'm going to save myself some time. Just go along and clip it so that the seam is directly facing up. Now I don't know if you can see that, but that is actually not very thick there. If you want to make it even more flat, you grab these really cool leather tool flat squishy pliers. Um, I will try and find a link for you guys and add it to the description and then you just squeeze and it makes it even flatter than it just was. So that is now not at all thick and I guarantee that your domestic machine will go over that. No thicker than the rest of the bag because we've cut out all of that seam bulk by squishing that down that is now just the same as over here. Come and do this other side. Now, if you're in a domestic, you're at an actual advantage right now. So we're going to top stitch this. I always prefer to top stitch with the top on top. Um, so normally I would go over to my other awesome machine and stitch it on there. But with a domestic, you can take off that bit, which means you can roll the whole bag around it. So you're at an actual 
advantage to people with flat beds like this. Again, I'm just adding clips. I don't really know why I need that many. Okay, so now we want a top stitch. So you can do one of three things. You can slide it over if you've got that kind of machine. Uh, you can turn the bag inside out or you can maneuver it like I'm going to. So I'm just going to basically squish it out like that and then top stitch it. So I'm going to start next to the flap. I'm going to do a quarter inch, which is the width of my foot. And I'm going to do a three quarter, three and three quarter stitch length. So I'm going to manually swivel three back through the first hole and I'm stitching a full quarter inch along the top. A uh, couple of reasons. One, because eighth of an inch people quite often fall off the edge, um, in which case then your stitches look more crooked because you're trying so hard to sit on the edge. If your foot's on the edge instead of in the center, it's much easier to do. So again, I'm still just maneuvering the whole bag around. Um, it's just more so squished outwards. Then I'm going to move that so I don't knock it. And then I've just got the back flap. So to do this, I'm going to pull slightly on the flap and then also flatten that out so that we get a nice non-puckered thing. I'm going to stop with my needle down. I'm going to pull the bag out so that I make sure I'm not stitching it. And then I'm going to go again. So you can do this in as many adjustments as you need. Don't feel bad if you need a lot. At one point in time, I would have needed a lot. Practice makes perfect, I believe they say. And so then we're back to the start. So I'm just going to back stitch a couple and then trim off my tails. So here's a problem for you. Where I started, see how it went all like ratty and knotty? We can actually fix that. So the first thing I do is I pull out of the seams as much of that as I can, and then you trim it down. So it's more likely to be, see that? I just put one, one little wiggle in and half of that knot just came straight out. And then you can trim it off again so that it's much less of a knot. So the knot is just because I don't hold my threads at the start of the machine. Um, such as life, but basically I can now trim that down to there and then I'm just going to melt those fluffy ends like so. Yeah. Angle it slightly more up. Beautiful. Do you obviously don't want to melt your fabric? So I'm being surprisingly gentle with this. You just want to melt the thread. Uh, if you're using 100% cotton thread, don't do that. It's not meltable. All right. So I've got a little bit of fluff going on, but the bag is looking wonderful. So now all I need to do is make a strap. Um, I'm just going to go and grab a quick drink and then we'll come back and do the strap. Okay, I'm back. So I've got a two inch piece, which I have ruled a line down the center and added my um, double sided tape to. I did that off camera just so it's a little bit quicker. Because uh, I notice a lot of you guys skip. Obviously, that's fine. Sometimes I ramble. I get it. All right. So we're going to, like we always do, fill both sides into the center. I am slowly getting faster at this. Not as fast as I'd like, but what do you do? Peel off the rest of the tape.
that is all stuck together. I've got a half inch strip of black that I'm going to stitch on top. Um, it was either going to be black or white, but I decided white was probably a bad choice for a strap because it'll get dirty. So I went with black. So I've done three holes back through the first hole. And then I'm just going to center it and stitch right down the edge. So I'm going to put them kind of in my lap so they're not pulling one way or the other. We want to try and have them as straight as possible because it's going to make it easier to stitch them down. Uh, so you can double sided tape these together or you can just do what I'm doing doing <laughs> doing and holding them in the center now I can tell that mine is stretching a little bit uh, my black on top but I don't think it's gonna matter and the reason I can tell it's stretching is because I'm holding it flat now and then I get a little bit of a kind of bubble So I'm just stitching nice and close to that edge and hoping I do not run out of thread because it seems to be a trend for me lately. Alright, then turn along the bottom. I always just manually crank those ones because I don't want to go too far. And then we're just going to stitch back the other side. I'm just peering to make sure it hasn't stopped. It doesn't sound like it, but sometimes you just never know it stopped. Damn it! Okay. That was the one thing I didn't want to happen, but that's right. I will show you how to fix it. I knew I should have went another one. I was going to, and then it's like, nah, we won't need it. Don't get yourself out. until I'm recording. I just tune them out. Or I have my music so loud I suppose I don't hear them. That's a thing too. Okay, so we're going to go back to where it stopped. And I'm just going to trim because there's a little bit extra. So I'm just going to trim them down and then I'm going to manually crank into one hole then into the next and then back into the first one. So I'm just going to do one and then I'm going to pull on those to make sure that they're not um, at all kind of locked in or looped or whatever. So you want to make sure they're nice and tight and then I'm just going to continue on. go back to here trim off the excess melt it down you don't want to hold the um, cigarette lighter too long on the vinyl you can barely tell That little bit of excess black, I'm just going to trim it off in line with the end, like so. Now you'll never know what happened. Well, obviously you will, you've watched, but you know, that's fine. So, 
with this bag, if you had have done um, D rings, you would do clip on connectors. But I don't need this um, strap to come off this bag because uh, it's not like an optional, it's just the only way to carry it. So I'm going to first just thread it around the middle bar. And then I need to adjust my this back down to the smallest hole. Um, I use the biggest hole to cut out the holes for the patterns and then the smallest hole to put the rivets in. Like so. Twist it around to make sure mine's cut all the way through. And then here are some rivets I prepared earlier. So I'm doing double capped rivets. These are 9 by 9 mil. Uh, so they are fairly large, but... I haven't had one come off yet and then I'm just gonna squish that down like so and so then holding the bag I'm gonna thread this side first so I'm gonna go down the top make sure it stays straight so there's no twists and then I'm gonna go up the one side and then down the other side I don't have to do the whole strap just a little bit and then you pull on it to make sure oh, there's a random piece of thread there pull it so that there's no loops in the strap like so and then we're going to bring it up and we're going to go under and then like that so that we don't see that raw edge there so now with that i'm just going to hold it center and punch a hole i'm also not punching that hole right right on the edge i've gone about a half an inch up because on the off chance that they over fill the bag and like it's crazy heavy even if that does stretch it's not going to stretch straight off the edge not that i'm sure that they'd be putting in it but you know maybe they collect bricks or something who knows all right so that is done so now we've got our awesome bag so you've got a slip pocket in the front a zipper pocket on the inside and the zipper pocket that I have put on the back. Now you can zip it up too. Thanks for staying with me through this tutorial um, and I promise I will be doing some more soon. Alright, bye guys!